the Holy Spirit that lives within us and allows us to do his works, his healing prophecy, and he works through us in that way. And so when I was reading in Colossians, it really touched my heart because as I started thinking about Jesus, 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 he did all these things. And then, then I started thinking, it's so amazing, the aftermath of it, because he's given us all these things and we just have to grab it. It's right there. You know I mean, there's these gifts, healings, and we just grab it, grab it, grab it and take it in. And um, I was talking to my mom the other day, too, about um, spiritual gifts and how because we had this talk in school about whether everybody gets the spiritual gifts. And in reality, we do. We get all the spiritual gifts. As soon as we receive the Holy Spirit, we have healing, we have prophecy, we have all of it. And it's the matter of us utilizing each and every spiritual gift. And so when it comes to healing, people say, oh, I don't see healing. I don't see, I haven't been seeing it. I've been asking God, well, have you been going up to a person asking him if you want to be healed? That's the question. Have you gone up to a person today and prayed for someone? Well, no, but I've been asking God. No, 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 no. He works through your hands. He works through you. So just go up, whether you're feeling it or not, and just go up to a person and start praying. And so, McCoy, you want to start coming up here? <laughs> Praise God. So check this out. So um, Sunday, right after, you want me to stay down here? Or where'd you go? Stay down here? Yeah, I'll stay right here. So um, Sunday, we went, right after church, we went out to uh, Ala Moana, and we set up a tent to go pray for people. We put up the signs of free spiritual reading, spiritual healing, spiritual cleansing. And um, before we even got started, I was like, okay, God, I just want to pray for people. So I went out, and I started just praying for people. And I saw, like, uh, these elderly people sitting down in, like, wheelchairs and stuff. And I walked up to this big group, and I was like, hey, guys, you know, I'm just I'm going around just loving on people. I want to pray for you guys if that's okay. And they're like, sure, okay. So I started to pray for everyone that was there. And this one lady, and I started prophesying over her. And I was like, hey, you know, I just see you. I see you like, okay, this is what you do. You're a, ter- uh, you're a caretaker. Boom, all these kind of different things. And like you hold this and all this kind of stuff. And she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, these people around me is actually that I actually take care of them. And the, everything you're talking about is actually what I do. That's like my business. I was like, okay, praise God. So, um, And I just started, you know, I prayed for her. I blessed her and everyone around them. And then we, we set up our tents and we get there. And we're just waiting, you know, see if anybody wants to uh, come into the tent. And <clears throat> some people were kind of like, oh, well, you know, who are these guys? You know, this is weird and all this kind of stuff. But these two these two people came in, these two younger kids. Um, this one this one kid and this, this one girl came in. They sat down, and I said, okay, what do you guys want today? And they're like, you know, whatever, whatever you have for us, a spiritual reading. And I said, okay. So I sat them down in the chair, and I started to prophesy over this one boy. And just God was just showing me things like uh, he used to journal or he does journaling. That's how he gets outside of the world. And he gets into the intimate place and telling um, I heard some stuff like God uh, that he overcame some things and he went through a lot of struggles and stuff like that. And anyways, uh, and then I prayed for this girl and we prophesied over this girl. And I said, OK, you know, we're just going to ask the spirit of truth to come and to reveal to you. Uh, I, I want you guys uh, to close your eyes and to ask them. So this is what I was telling them, to ask them to ask the spirit of truth to show you who he is. And so we had them do that. And this one girl, I said, what, what are you hearing? What are you feeling? What are you sensing? And she said, I don't hear anything, but I see a picture. I said, okay, what is the picture? And she says, I see a triangle. And I said, oh, okay. So, and she's like, then I see like these two lights and they're coming in. And I'm like, okay, that's awesome, Jesus. And so what was so significant about the triangle is because the spirit of truth revealed that. And if you look at a triangle, it has three points, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. So I'm like, come on. And I said, to be honest with you guys, this right here is an invitation to show you that what we're doing right here is Jesus and that Jesus is real and all he wants is relationship with you and the reason why he revealed these things is to show you that he loves you are you willing to accept him in today and they're like yes let's do it so we had them pray and Jesus came in and filled them up and they're feeling this peace and comfort and I was asking the boy hey what's you know do you need any any he was he said how did you know I overcame some things and I was like just God just revealed I revealed to me and I was like I think it's in relation uh, relationship and family stuff he's like no I was actually going through like a lot of addictions and I had like this um he was going he did like cocaine and all these kind of different things and so like his nostrils is like dead like he couldn't like smell out of it or breathe good out of it and right after I said I said you know what man God wants to heal you 
I said, we're going to pray, and God's going to crush that thing, and you're going to be able to smell again, and you're going to be free. He said, okay, let's do this. So we pray for him, and he just takes a deep breath in. And then he exhales, and he goes, wow, you guys you guys are good. I said, what, I said what's going on, man? He's like, no, you guys are good. And be, even, before we, even while uh, we told him before Jesus, he's like, man, you guys are so good. You guys are so good. And so uh, we pray for him more, and I had him just take a deep breath in. He's like, Bro, this is it's 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 getting good. He's like, I couldn't I couldn't breathe in that much uh, clearly, but after you pray, like now I can breathe like so much clearer. I'm like, come on, Jesus. So we prayed for the smell to come back. I don't know I don't know if he could smell or not afterwards, but all I know is that uh, the the shock on his face was like, whoa, what is happening? And so this is what I wanted to share tonight. Is right after then I said, okay, so you know about God, you know about Jesus, you know about the Holy Spirit. I said, so you heard about the gospel, right? You heard about the gospel, right? And they said, oh, sure, yeah, I heard about the gospel. And I said, tell me, what, what do you know? And I said, you heard, it, you heard it, that Jesus died because we're sinners. And then when Jesus rises again, that we'll have eternal life, right? And they said, okay. They said, yeah, yeah, you know. I said, there's so much more. I said, God has to be so much bigger, so much greater, that when you hear this gospel, it's something that you ever wanted to live for. It's something that you ever wanted dearly to your heart. And I said, check this out. This is the true light of the gospel. I said, Jesus didn't die because we're sinners, because we're horrible people, because we're bad people. But instead, he died because we were of high value. I said, no one pays a high price for something that's worthless, right? I said, how do I know this? Because in the beginning, God created man in his image, in his likeness, in his reflection. But when man sinned and, and ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and when they fell short of God, sin covered around the image of God. And when Jesus came, he removed that covering and he exposed who we are. And then I said, when Jesus rose again, he then breathed on us. Why? Because he brought us back to original value as if we never sinned before, as if we, even, as if we never even had knowledge of ever sinning at all. And I said, check this out. And then he said, go and be like me, be an imitator of me. So when Jesus rose again, he didn't just save us so that we could get into eternity, but even better, that eternity would get into us, that now we can go and we can release the kingdom of heaven everywhere that, everywhere that we dare to go, everywhere that we dare to go. And I said, have you heard the gospel? And he looks at me and he's like, well, that's a new way of thinking it. I've never seen it that way. I said, this is freedom. I said, this is what you're made for. I said, I said, we've heard it all these, 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 these different things that we're always going to sin. We're always going to fall short of God. And then we make it upon us as our mentality. And I said, I want to propose to you something. And I'm not blaspheming. Just read the word, okay? I want to propose to you something tonight that we could actually be sinless. How many of you believe that? Come on, Jesus. Now, let me share with you. What a, how, why are you saying this? He's like, oh, you can be sinless. Oh, so you're holy. But no, Jesus is holy. Jesus is righteous. Jesus is pure. He consecrated himself in order for me to step into that very thing. So check this out. It says in, it says in 1 John, 1 John 1, 3, uh, 1 John 1, 9, it says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, right? So what's left standing if he cleanses us from all unrighteousness? only righteousness okay and it says that he who sins is a sinner right am i right well let's go deeper let's go deeper let's look deeper it says he who practices sin who makes a practice of sin who habitually continues in normal daily living life of sin is a sinner okay so to say that you fell short one time and you sin one time does that make you a sinner no, it doesn't, because it has to be a continual thing. But if in the heart that you're carrying such a sincerity where you sin and you say, God, I don't know what happened. I thank you, Lord, that that's not who I am and that you're such a father, God. And you're showing me, God, that this is my value. And God, I don't even relate to that. And shame is not a part of me, God, because you put it on the cross and let it be a curse. And thank you that I'm holy and righteous and redeemed, God. And I thank you because you're sinless, so am I. And as you are, so am I in this world. If he's sinless, so are we are sinless. So check this out. If it's, it says in, in Romans 5 that by one man's disobedience led, it, uh, led us to become sinners. But it was by one man's obedience that we became righteous. So it's no longer that we're sinners saved by grace, but now we are righteous. Now we are saints. And I heard this from Ron, and Ron said, he said, why, why did Jesus die? Oh, we, Jesus died because we were the joy set before him. He said, how can God take delight in sinners? He can't. 
because he didn't see the sin inside of us. He saw himself inside of us. That's why he was so joyful. When Jesus saw us at the cross, he's saying, whoa, look at them. They look just like me. God, I thank you. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to pay a price for them so that they can live, in, live as me in this world, God, that they can reproduce my image everywhere I go. So we could actually be sinless as Jesus is sinless. What do you think about that? Yeah? Yeah? So let's 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 jump in. Let's let's go deeper. What 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 are we settling for? What 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 are we settling for that that we're always gonna fall short of the glory of God, that we're always gonna be a sinner that I, I and I heard this from, from a famous man and he's he goes he goes where he goes, When you sin, you're a sinner. If you lie, you're a sinner. If you steal, you're a sinner. And I said, Okay. God, am I hearing from him the truth? Or, or is there something more that you want to reveal? And that's, that's when God spoke to me and he said, there's so much more. Let's, let's look more into this. For he said that, the, the, that the, the more blindness on our eyes is passing away, but behold, the true light is already shining. So what's the true light? The true light is, the true light is exactly what we're talking about, that we could actually be like Jesus. So, so let's, let's crush that, that sinner mentality because God doesn't want us to have a mind that's consciousness and aware of sin, but God wants us to have a mind that's conscious that we are sons, conscious that he redeemed us. What did he redeem us to? He redeemed us back to the place of where we used to walk and talk and live and be like him. If we look in Romans 1, 16, it says, uh, be unashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God unto salvation okay now we talk about it, we say we hear it what 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 is he even talking about the gospel for it's the power of god unto salvation now when you see that jesus died okay to remove sin to expose our value he died for our value and then he saved us what did he save us to what is salvation i want to ask you this question what are you saved from and who are you saved to you see we're saved from sin and we're saved to holiness. We're saved from death and we're saved to life. We're saved from the devil and we're saved to Jesus. And that's who we really are. And that's what salvation is, that we're saved to Christ. And if we're saved from him, we have no awareness of darkness because light has come and we behold him and then we become like him. And if it says in Colossians that he has delivered us out of the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love, what does that mean? It means that we were once in the country of sin, but now that Jesus came, he took us out of that country, stepped us into the kingdom of the son of his love, where love never fails and never gives up and never runs out, where love is from everlasting to everlasting, where love keeps no record of wrong, but always hopes for the best, always sees the best and doesn't even know what that is, because every time you come before Papa, his says that he separates your sins as far as the east is from the west and there's a clean slate before you and Jesus standing on the side saying justified he said my blood has flowed over you and made peace with you and God when the blood comes upon you this is the true light of the gospel when the blood comes upon you you can't ever stand into the when when man ate from the tree right they couldn't stand into the presence of God but what happened when Jesus was on the cross and his blood flowed and made peace with us and God in order that the blood would cause us to step right alongside of Papa and not only that we jumped in him and he jumped in us and we became one now now he's not just right here but boom he's right here how much more close can God get to us we say God is with us and alongside of us but did you forget that God is within us Christ in us, the hope of glory. What We talk about the hope of glory. What really is that? I said, God, what is the hope of glory? He said, the revealing of my power. Who will reveal the power of God that everywhere you go, people would see the glory of God? What's the glory? When God demonstrates, demonstrates his signs, his miracles, his wonder, his power, his love on the earth. Who will recognize that this is the true light of the gospel, but now the blood flows over us. The blood speaks a better word. The blood washes over us. The blood says justify. The blood says redeem. The blood says that there's, there's no wrong held against you. There's no accusation held against you. There's no punishment held against you. Now you're free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So how can you ever live in a place of where there is sin? If God is light and in him is no darkness, no variation, no shadow, nothing at all, then if the God who is light lives inside of you, how can there be any room for darkness? There isn't. And the only place that, we, that there could be darkness is right in between your ears. 
We say that there's a spiritual warfare. Yes, there's a spiritual warfare. We say that there's a battle. There's all these things going on. Oh, I'm being attacked by this. I'm being attacked by this. The devil is here and the devil is here. You need to stand your ground and look up and say, God, my redemption draweth nigh. You need to understand that the kingdom of God is on offense. And I'm just going to, I'm just flowing. I don't even know what's going on. This is making sense. You have to understand that the kingdom of God is on offense. Look, check this out. I want to help you. It says that the gates of hell will not prevail. The gates, guys. The gates. Why is there gates? Because it means that the gates of hell will not prevail. It means that the devil is on defense. So who's on offense? I want to propose to you, take out your sword. You already have the armor. Take out your sword and start I don't know, windling, swindling, taking that guy out, you know? Come on, guys, what are you waiting for? Like, we, we make it personal. Every time the devil tries to attack us and we say the spiritual battle is personal, I want to propose to you something. What if it's not personal? What, what if the attack is really on the kingdom within you? What if really the attack is on the kingdom within you? Stop taking it personal. To live is Christ to die is gain. We love not our own life even unto death. We say that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. Did we forget the third one? Do you know what I'm talking about? We love not our own life even unto death. In the face of trial, in the face of conflict, in the face of affliction, in the face of circumstance, we're manifesting Christ. Come on. We're manifesting Jesus. For Jesus was anointed with the spirit, with the oil of joy above his brethren. And in those places where you're going through hard times, the oil of joy should be washing and lavishing over you. You should be able to release God and release Jesus. And in that place, the devil will not want to attack you because every time he touches you, he sees you go back to the kingdom. Now check this out. We say, oh, the devil is speaking. The devil. This one lady came up to me and she said, oh, but the devil keeps talking to me about my past and all these kind of things. He keeps on remembering all these things. Can you pray for me that the peace of God will come and silence? I said, stop right there. I don't want to do an injustice for you. And she said, what? I said, you need to know the mind of the spirit and the mind of the flesh. I said, the devil is a jerk. He will constantly keep on touching you. He will constantly keep on speaking to you. He will constantly keep on giving you these remembrance. But I said, check this out. <clears throat> this, is, this is what I told her. I said, you know what? I can pray for you. I could rebuke the devil's voice. I could silence him right now, and you would walk out here, and he would keep on talking to you. I said, never will I want to do this injustice to you. I said, you should be excited when the devil keeps on bringing these things back to you, when the devil keeps on touching you. Why? Because he's only going to thrust you through the throne room of grace where you get before Papa God and you say, God, here am I. Lord, I ask that you help me. I ask that you fill me. God, I thank you that in my weaknesses that you are made strong. God, I thank you that the grace of heaven will dare to breathe on me, God, and inspire me to become more like you. Father, I just thank you, God, and I so appreciate that your Holy Spirit is such a helper, such a comforter, that you are a wonderful counselor, God, and I come before you and I say, Papa, I thank you because I love not my own life even unto death, God, and no matter what the enemy is saying, that's not who I am, God. This is who you call me to be, holy, righteous, redeem, above reproach, God. And that's who you made me to be because the blood covers me. Do you see what happens right there in that place? You just access fate. You just put on fate. And when fate came in, grace and whoo, breathe and kissed upon you. And now you became everything that you put on. We come before the throne room of grace humbly and boldly in every time of need. Tell me one time that you did not need Jesus. Come on. Apart from the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing at all. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Do you really believe it? We, we need to get out of ourselves. You died a long time ago, Romans 6, when we were baptized into Christ. And the life you used to once live was dead. And the things you wants to do and the old behaviors that you wants to live and the things that once was relating to you now died. And when you died, when Jesus died, he rose up again and you rose up with him into the new life. And that's who we are. We have a new life. It says resurrection power has been exerted over them that believe. We're talking about the gifts tonight. Oh, he was talking about the gifts tonight. I want to propose to you. Do you have the Holy Spirit? So if the Spirit of God dwells in you, the same Spirit that rose Christ from the grave dwells inside of you, does that mean you have resurrection power? So if the Spirit of God lives and dwells inside of you, and the same Spirit was given to Jesus without measure, boundlessly, what, what, what does that limit you to? Are, are we limiting ourselves to just one thing? And I heard my brother say this. He said, what gifts are you practicing should be the real answer, should, should, should be the question proposed. 
What gifts are you practicing now that the true light of the gospel came and that you're in right standing with Papa and that he lives inside of you, you have it all. Don't limit yourself to one thing. Don't limit yourself to word of knowledge. Don't limit yourself to prophecy. Don't limit yourself to healing. Why not take it all? Why not practice it all? You want it? Go ahead and move in it. God wants to give you grace, kiss upon it, and move in it. So check this out. I saw a picture of Jesus, and, and we were in our old ways and the things that we used to do in our old man. And then I saw him from across the room, and we all ran up to him, we kissed him, and we fell in love with him. And the things of the old wanted us, but it couldn't get us no more because we saw Jesus, and we saw his beauty, and we behold his face, and we're like, God, that's all we want. We want you. And that's exactly what's happening. We fell in love with God, and these things of the old try to get us, but God is saying, no, this is who you are, and this is what you're created for. So tonight, um, you got anything wrong? So tonight, Jesus on the cross, what did he do? He purchased our healing. By his stripes, we are healed. Jesus on the cross bore our sicknesses. By his stripes, we have been healed. I want to propose to you something that we don't need to create some kind of radical atmosphere with the lights, and we don't need to create something where the smoke machine comes out. But what if we just actually invite the Holy Spirit and let him be God and let him be the spirit who actually moves, who actually desires to heal more than we desire to lay hands and heal? How about I propose something that we actually let the Holy Spirit come and let him speak to us individually and watch what he wants to say and watch what he wants to do. So I want everyone here to close their eyes and we're going to say, we're just going to just take a few minutes and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come. And if there's something in your body that you need a healing, I want you to picture Jesus not on the cross no more because he already came off. But I want you to see Jesus walk up to you, begin to hold you begin to embrace you and I want you just to begin to engage I want you to begin to feel his heart I want you to begin to tune in with his mind I want you from heart to heart from soul to soul from spirit to spirit everything flowing in your DNA begin to relay and connect to Papa God I want you to see as he begins to touch the places where you need healing I want you to begin to see he's gonna even those I feel like he really wants to sing over some of you. I really want you just to begin to engage and watch what he begins to do as Jesus comes and approaches you right now. And he's going to take you, not, not just by one hand, he's going to take you by two hands and he's going to hug you. And in that moment, he's going to begin to speak something. And I just want you to become very aware. So we say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you, Papa. Just begin to touch God. Begin to touch God. Begin to touch God. Begin to touch God. Release confirmation, God. Release affirmation, God. In Jesus' name, release healing, God. Release deliverance, God. In Jesus' name, we say that everything not of you must leave right now. We say let love come in and let all fear go right now. We loose you from every affliction in Jesus' name. We loose you from every bondage right now in Jesus' name. We take authority and we say you go right now. Every bit of it, last thing, go. In Jesus' name, God, and we say come and release your love, Papa. Release your love, Papa. And I see, I see him beginning to hold some of you. And some of you might be thinking, well, I don't see anything. I don't hear anything. Just, just, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. In the own creativity of your mind, begin to tap into that and you'll watch and you'll see even if you think it's yourself it's actually Jesus Papa we thank you for your love God whoa your warm embrace God whoa and Jesus more God Jesus more touch Papa touch Papa touch Papa touch Papa is there is there someone in here now keep your eyes closed just 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 begin to love on him just begin to touch on him and just begin to ask him just begin to allow him to speak to you but is there someone in here who's picturing jesus uh with them walking on water is that somebody here is there somebody here who is picturing jesus with them walking like on this path and there's it seems to be like just like a valley that they're in is anybody here? 
Is there somebody here who's picturing Jesus holding them, but they're like at a beach setting? Is there anybody here? Okay. Thank you, Papa. Thank you. Is there somebody here who's picturing Jesus uh, with them like uh, in their room, in their own secret place? Is that somebody here? Is there somebody here who's picturing Jesus just sitting down right where you are in this place? Is that somebody here? Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Is there somebody here who's picturing Jesus sitting down with them like at a mountaintop? Is that somebody here? Is there somebody here who's picturing Jesus with them while they're driving in their own car? Thank you, Papa. So, Father, I thank you for what you're doing, God. And I say, would you touch? Would you increase, God? Would you begin to love? Would you begin to move? God, in Jesus' name. I want to speak to everybody's hearts here. And I want to declare over you shalom of heaven right now. Shalom of heaven. Let the peace of God crush everything that seems to be out of order, that seems to be chaos. Let the peace of God become and fill in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Papa. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Just take a just take a two more minutes, two more minutes. He's he's I feel like he's doing some deep work within the heart. Like he's he's going deep, he's cutting some things off, and he's renewing things, he's touching things, he's loving on some things. I feel like he's revealing some 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 things that you've been asking for. So God we say just more, God. More, God. More. 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 Jesus' name. Jesus' name, God. Thank you, Papa. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So is there is there anybody here who knows somebody who has like a a heart condition where uh these two main parts in the within the heart like the arteries is something is going on? Does anybody have or know of a person that's going through something like that that has a heart condition? Yeah, we, we can pray for that afterwards. Is there, I feel like somebody, God was showing them something real clearly, um, something specific. Is that is that anybody here? You want to come up here and share? What did you see? Um, the last thing I saw was when you guys, um, this is actually um, a vision I had for a while because I'm going back to college. And I was walking on the beach, beach, and then um, I was with him, and he basically told me, well, we were walking together, and then he said, let's go this way, and we went off the beach and onto the water, and that's why, I, like, I guess that's, like, a representation of me going to college with him. Can we just uh, extend hands towards her and bless her? Father, we just thank you, God, for your daughter. 
We thank you for confirmation, God, that you revealed, God, that you were with her on the beach, God. And I thank you, Lord, that's something that you want to show her, God, that she's going the right way. So, Father, we thank you. We bless, God, what she's doing. We bless where she's going, God. We bless her mission, God. We bless her destiny. We bless her purpose, God. And we say increase, and we say more, and we say touch, and a fresh fill of your Holy Spirit right now to come. God, a fresh baptism of holy fire, God. Your fire of holiness, God, is set her ablaze that everywhere she go, she would dare leave a trail of fire even within and on top of the water god we say in jesus name we bless you to go we bless you to go we release you to go we say go where your heart is telling you to go that jesus is breathing on it and inspiring you to go so god we thank you god we say increase in what you're doing god we say more we say let the true light of the gospel god begin to unravel god and begin to pull her up higher into the things that you've called her to do so father i thank you in jesus name god amen is there somebody else here that wants to share something that God is showing them real clearly. You got something you want to share? Yeah. Um, all I could do was, I could see just a bright, bright, bright light coming down on me and all over me. And I could feel him touching my body and healing my body and just holding me. That's all it was. Everybody to extend hands, we're going to pray. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, God. We say you who began a good work, surely will you bring it unto completion, God. We say in Jesus' name, God, we command healing right now. God, we thank you that your love covers it all, God. We thank you that your love causes every fear and every anxiety and everything not of you, every sickness to begin to go out. We thank you that love lavishes, God, that grace lavishes upon her. God, it enfolds her, it enwraps her, God. It, it covers her, God, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, God. It's a beautiful blanket that she wears. It's a beautiful covering that she wears. God, we thank you that the blood covers her, God, that it speaks a better word over her life. God, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the warmth of your touch and the warmth of your comfort, God. And we say, Holy Spirit, come and move. Holy Spirit, come and touch more. Increase, God. The, we say that it gives you good pleasure to manifest your kingdom. We say, God, right now, would you touch with glory? Would you touch with power, God? Increase. Holy Spirit, come. We release a fresh baptism of you right now. In Jesus' name, well, there it is. I feel the power of God. We say, touch, God, more, more, God, more, 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 God. Feel, begin to feel, begin to feel, God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Is there, is there, is there anybody else here who wants to share something that God was showing them, what you were feeling, what you were seeing, what you were picturing? picked me up, but I wasn't with his clothes on. I have a dress on. Yeah. He just picked me up, pulled me up, and he didn't say anything, and I didn't say anything. And then he, because when you say that, in, I felt my left knee yeah. uh, has a pain now and then, okay. and, but I felt a warmth on yeah. it, and then he took me back, cool. and then awesome let's pray for her father we thank you in jesus name god for the touch of your comfort for the warmth of your love god we thank you for the beautiful clothes that you placed upon her the new clothes the new life god in jesus name and father we thank you that you would come and let your angels minister healing god we we say that you would come and would you touch god complete healing and complete restoration god right now we say that the light of your glory god begin to shine ever so brightly god that she would be as a bright and shining star god shining in the midst of every generation god father that when people see her God that they would see you inside of her that your glory would so and shadow her God that when the enemy comes he'd runs away God because he would only see you God I thank you God for the fear of the Lord that she carries upon her life God and reverence of you is such a great thing God Father and I thank you that's the beginning of wisdom and yet indeed it's wisdom God I thank you would you bless that and I say would it ever would it ever increase even more and more abundantly God we command healing in Jesus name amen so who you who who came here? Who who needs a who needs a, a healing in their body? I want you guys. Um, what what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna pray for healing, but 
I pray, I pray a lot for healing. Now it's your guys' turn to pray for healing. Okay, so we, we came here. Now that you're already equipped, now that you already have the Holy Spirit, we're gonna have we're gonna have you guys just lay hands on people. And it's a simple thing. All we're doing basically is just bringing out something that was already purchased. Healing was already purchased. All we do is we lay hands and we say, you come forth right now. You be brought out and you be manifested into the natural. Where there was sickness, there should be healing. Where there is pain, there should be healing. Where there is death, there should be life. And, and nothing in the physical ever disqualifies, disqualifies us from the things of the supernatural, which really is natural because it's Jesus. Okay, so if there, if there, I mean, if there's somebody in here who needs who needs a healing, or even I even felt this that there's like this un like this thing that seems like it's fighting you, like right within here. It seems like there's a fight, a battle going in within your heart, and it's something that you're like, well, where did this come from? I even want, I even, I even feel like to pray for freedom because God wants to break that thing off of you, and He wants to cause that thing to get out. So if that if that's you, we're gonna have uh, as a as a body, as a family, as a team, we're all gonna lay hands, and we're all gonna pray, and we're gonna watch the Holy Spirit move. So if that's if that's you who needs who first of all needs that freedom thing, uh, what should we do? Let's 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 pray for that. Um, but first we wanna first we wanna tackle. Not even tackle. First, we wanna we wanna jump into the healing thing, and let's let's see God restore some some stuff. So, what's what's going on? Anybody needs healing in their bodies? Yeah. I want you to come up here. Okay. So check this out. So we're going to make like we're on the streets, and I'm going to show you what it's like. So we're going to walk up to people, okay? Pretend we're on the streets, and we're going to say, hey, what's your name? Rooney. Rooney? Yes. My name's Ko. I love to go around and uh, just love on people. Is there anything I can pray for you today for? Yeah. Or better yet, how can I pray for you? Yeah. COPD, and, uh, asthma, so they mm -hmm. fight for it in the stomach. So this is going to be awesome. The thing I was just talking about, like yeah. someone struggling with something, yeah. God wants to break that off today. Mm -hmm. So like we're, like we're out on the streets, I would say, okay, you know, what's going on? How can I pray for you? Introduce your name. Okay, we got this. Now all I do is uh, there's, even if somebody gives you a long list of things, God heals. That's right. It's Jesus. Everything else is irrelevant. That's Jesus right. wants to touch. Mm -hmm. So just just the word of knowledge that boom, God, something is going on right here. God wants to break that off of you tonight. And us as a body, God said, "Lay hands on the sick; they shall recover." Okay. And God says, "Go cast things out, and it gotta go." So who who here? I want I want three people here to to come up here and pray. Who's willing to pray? Yeah, come up here. Okay. I want you to stand right here because there's like some kind of uh, portal thing Jesus is doing. You can you can face this. So yeah, stay right there. That's good. So can someone stand behind her just in case? Okay. And I want two people to lay hands on her shoulders. Now this is just to exercise the gifts and the things of the spirit, okay? So we asked her, so right now, do you feel like, what, do you feel pain? Do you feel like some sensation? Like I can't breathe, I can't do this. Yeah, it's, okay. uh, it's not pain, yeah. but I have a hard time breathing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's labor. Okay, 
So I want to share with you this quick testimony. We were in the hospital, and this is going to increase your faith. We were in the hospital, and we're worshiping. And this lady comes in, and she cannot breathe. And she's having a hard time breathing. And we walk up to her, and we pray, and the Spirit of God comes on her. And she goes, whoa. I said, what happened? She said, my asthma just left me. So we're going to pray. And everything that, that, that struggle in you, it's going to have to go. It has to bow down. Because the name of Jesus is so much greater and so much bigger. So we're going to, I want everybody to begin to extend hands and begin to pray. And just be very aware of your body. As everyone here is praying, be very aware of your body. Just begin to sense the Holy Spirit. Just begin to feel the Holy Spirit. So right now, out loud, the people who are laying hands on her, I want you guys to pray. First, I want to start off with you, then you, then you. Just begin to pray. Just command healing, command those things to go. Are you feeling anything that's happening? I feel lighter. Yeah, it's awesome. So like Jesus, when he prayed for the blind man, once, twice, he kept on going after it. So I want you to go next. Now, we're, we're going to make like we're praying out on the streets. So when you pray, always eyes open. Always eyes open. Go ahead. Command it to go. Speak life. You speak to the lungs. You say, be open. You say, let heaven come. Let heaven invade. Be open right now. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Keep on praying, guys. Begin to pray in the spirit. 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 Right now, in Jesus' name, we say, lasting, let her go. We break this, God. We say, lightning of heaven, come right now and fill in Jesus' name. Lightning of heaven, come and touch right now with glory. Touch right now in power, God. We say, lasting out, I said in Jesus' name. Let her go. Let her go right now. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Freedom. 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 Freedom, 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 freedom. Do not manifest in Jesus' name. You stop right now. In Jesus' name. You stop right now. Purify. Shame go. In Jesus' name. Begin to pray for
So don't be afraid, guys. Jesus is Lord and Jesus is King. If those around are feeling some kind of thing that's beginning to rise up in them, I want you to come up here right now because God wants that thing to be broken off of you. God wants that thing to be broken off of you. We say go, last thing. I want you to turn to the person next to you. And if there's something that they need prayer, you know what? I want you to just prophesy life in them. I want you to begin to command healing in them. If you couldn't walk before, take them by the hand and begin to walk them. Because God wants to break off that thing that you can't walk. And God wants to give you healing. So I want you to turn to that person. If you need freedom in your life, I want you to begin to declare freedom. That everything not of God must go. And I feel like there's even religious things that God wants to break off right now. So I want you to turn to your neighbor. Just begin to pray. God, come. Heaven, God, come and fill in Jesus' name. Just begin to command healing. Just begin to command freedom in people. Just begin to command life in people. Just begin to praise God through one another. Just begin to pray for one another right now in Jesus' name.
Hello. 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 It's nine o'clock and we um, need to be closing up, but I think, is there anybody who wants to share a testimony? Grandpa and Grandma. So this is Janet and um, Elijah, and some of us were praying over her, and the Lord uh, grew out her left leg, grew out her left leg, and her eyes, she wore the visor because the light was too bright. We prayed for her eyes, and the Lord healed it so there's no more glare. And she had um, her neck, uh, neck and shoulder was tight. Uh, and um, when after Elijah prayed, she felt loose and relaxed. Yeah. And then praying for her ankles so her ankles can be better um, instead of walking. But so praise God. And she accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's her, what's her last name? So this is Janet Kitagawa. Okay. Renee's mom. <laughs> and this is Roy. Roy, uh, what happened to you? My back. They stayed on my back. So, yeah, now I, I hope I can be better at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And now I think we don't have to go see doctors anymore. <laughs> Let's call on Dr. Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Dr. Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And Jesus, would you yeah. like to receive yes. the Lord? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So this is Roy Kitagawa. So praise God. God is good. God is good. Anybody else want to give a testimony? I got you. Yes. <laughs> Give God the glory, right? I got to, jeez, uh, I just want to talk. <laughs> they just give me the mic. <laughs> um, you know, I just, I just want to, yeah, I, I want to, the reason why I want to share is because to God be the glory. I, um, you know, I was, I, I've been so excited from last week when I came. Um, what's his name? What's your name? Yeah, Koa. And uh, he had prophesied over my daughter. And I was like, that's accurate. So I said, the only one know that, that's God. So, you know, that just really, uh, you know, really touched my heart. And so, Tonight was kind of running late, and I'm like, Lord, I said, it's, you know, it's like a half an hour already. And he's, you know, all I got was, I'm an on-time God. So I said, okay. So when I got in, the scripture that I heard uh, for in First John caught my attention. So I started listening, and as he was talking, I mean, you know, it's, it's God in him. I was like so excited. I'm like, I'm hearing truth. I'm hearing life. And I, my faith was just rising up, was just rising up, and I knew it. And so when he asked us to close our eyes and, uh, you know, so we could see, you know, see, you see Jesus, how you see Jesus. And I did see the Lord. But, you know, the, the battle is between your two ears. So I came in, you know, when I came in, I was dealing with I had a hard time walking up the stairs I was pant you know just panting and uh, I was like no I'm, I'm not gonna take my medicine I'm not gonna take my inhaler I'm gonna wait you know and so anyway when he when he uh started sharing then all of a sudden it's like I saw Jesus talking you know like he was up here talking mm -hmm. You know, I saw him, but Jesus in him, you know, just Jesus walking back and forth and talking, the word talking, you know, and I'm like, wow. So then my faith is just so stirred up, and, and I could, my faith, I was like, man, hey, I, I know what I'm hearing. I'm hearing truth right now. So then when he said, close your eyes, and I did, and right away I saw the Lord, and I just saw the Lord like this. But I saw clouds. I saw it was like he was up, you know, in the sky. So I'm like, that's not the Lord. So my mind is saying, that's not the Lord. 
but the Lord doesn't float, you know. So I was like, oh, Lord, is that you? And then, um, you know, oh, and then I saw the Lord. Yeah, first his hands was like this. Then I saw his hands like this. And, and I said, Lord, is that you? And he said, first. I was like, wow. So, but when the part where he held his hands up, I, I had an attack, uh, asthma attack, if anybody knows what that is, but I was starting to labor. So I kept my eyes closed and I was reaching in my purse for my inhaler. And when I did that, I said, I ain't, I ain't grabbing my inhaler. I'm going to receive, I receive what I'm hearing. So I said, no, I would take my hand away. And, and then I just said, opened my eyes and I said, Lord, I'm just going to trust you. I believe. And so then when it, he, he was talking and saying, you know, has anybody, you know, he said, I feel that somebody has something struggling. But when it, I saw his hand go like this, as soon as his hand came to his chest, the Lord said, that is you. And so I was like sitting down and I said, oh, I wish somebody else would stand. <laughs> Nobody did. And so, so then I was like, Lord, somebody, some, I'm not going to say nothing. He said, <laughs> he said, somebody's struggling. He said, that's you. <laughs> the Lord said again to me, I said, I need to obey. He said, get up there. So <laughs> that's why I came. So I just, you know, <laughs> to be honest, sometimes we tend to battle. In, but you know what I kept hearing was, was that, you know, we walk in the light. And I was finding my struggling at times was we do. We say, oh, you know, I'm battling with this and battling with that. And it's, it's excuses. We're supposed to be walking in the light all the time. Praise God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been praying. And you know, Carol, I've been praying for a long time for the gift of tongues. And Cor really prayed over me on that. And he really helped the Holy Spirit to come out in, in the gift of tongues. And thank you. Thank you. He, 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 he's very gifted. Thank you. Praise God. So, Carol, let's hear it. Let's all pray in our spirit language, and I'm going to hear her. Chora bahane bahere bahane bakara basika da bahane bakoya kara bahane bahaya bahoya karya bakanda. Glory, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Carol, the reason the reason I ask you to do it is because then you go home and you're going to say, oh, I cannot speak it. I'm all by myself. I cannot speak it. But you received it, and just now you spoke it on your own. And so when you go home, you'll get to speak it on your own and continue, continue, continue. Um, I usually do that as a test to encourage people. Um, so the other week it was Gail's sister, Gail Nita's sister, Helen. Um, she received it over here, and then when she got over there, I said, okay, Helen, now speak in tongues. She said, I cannot. I said, excuse me, you got it over there. You're over here. You can speak it. Just remember the syllables that you first started with. And she did, and she could speak it there. So I said, now you go home, and you're going to speak it always. Yeah. So praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Share and give God glory. Hi, my name is Ursula, and um, what year was it? 2008. I got into a car wreck. Um, 
I was um, so in love with somebody that I wanted to take my own life. And I didn't know God that well. The people came out of the car, looked me over, said they were drunk. And I told them, no, you're not. You're not drunk. Thank you. I wanted to know why they did that, but I didn't find out until tonight. <laughs> you know, like when you're little and you play with knives or you dig things out or you get, you get, you hurt yourself because you hear it from someone else's lips that their mother was rude or things like that I grew up with overhearing. It wasn't for my ears to hear, but I still heard it. And I only had one pair of clothes left from those people that know me really well. And I left my shorts behind. I went to the boat harbor and I left him behind. You know, anything to do with this area of my body. God talked to me so much within the last seven years. That's what I can remember, 2007, seven years. I can't remember if it's 17, 2014, you know, but I remember just telling them they look familiar. I have something on my leg here where part of the piece went into my leg and stopped my leg from walking. And you, this part is like skin came out from the, from the car wreck. Um, I went walking for two weeks, two weeks. You can come up here, come. How long until I started walking? Yeah, well, let me just, um, 2008, she was, she was in a, uh, a drunk driver hit her, is what she wanted to convey. A yeah. husband and wife came out from a the steakhouse uh, and she was walking across the street to go to the beach. And uh, anyway, it, uh, what happened, she was torn 30 feet and the left side of her, her back of her head was actually kind of flipped over like in the front, so it was lacerated. And um, her whole left side was uh, uh, broken. Her, her, pelvic, her pelvic from the front to the back was broken. And uh, they said that she couldn't, she wouldn't be able to walk because your pelvis is what holds your, so anyway, God healed her and, um, you know, down to her, her legs, two weeks. Uh, when I went, uh, just share this, when that had happened, when I went to see my daughter in the hospital that evening, I was so in shock because when I saw her, people who are trauma, who have that, they actually, their bodies swell up. And um, she was so huge, I, I was shocked. And uh, anyway, so when I walked in the room, there was a man sitting down, and his back was facing towards the door. And I said, Lord, you know, and we were praying. And anyway, I just said, you know, Lord, I, help me. You know, I don't know what I'm going to see. You know, give me the strength, you know. And so I just heard the Holy Spirit say, go look at the man so I walked in front of him and I looked at him and his tag he said uh, I saw his tag and his tag kind of just stood out and I looked at it and the Lord said and it said Abel and right there the Lord said I am Abel and so when I you know I heard that so clear and he said let no one touch her but you go over there and you anoint her and you pray over her. Two weeks later, my daughter was up and walking out of that hospital. And, you know, so praise God, yeah. And then she went to rehab. Two weeks later, two weeks, uh, you know, we, she went to the rehab center. Two weeks later, she got up and she was walking. Now she was still, her, the pelvis was broken front and back. But she got up and walked in the, the, you know, uh, physical therapy uh, 
saw her, uh, therapist saw her, and they're like, uh, she's walking, you know, and she ended up walking um, out of the hospital, and she is suffering with manic, this uh, manic depressant, where she had, it's called um, inter uh, external stimuli, so like if you hear noise outside, she would hear it, she would automatically go from like zero to a hundred, boom, she was gone. She did this for six years. She walked the island back and forth, barefooted. She was doing that, six years. The seventh year, the Lord said it is finished. She's coming out. So she was in and out of the state hospital all those years. But God was doing a work in her. I mean, my daughter, the police from one end of the island to the other knew her very well. And, but, you know, they said she could not talk. She would not be able to remember. And this is what, you know, God is still in the process of healing her. But, you know, God is still, yeah, he's still, you know, at work in her. And for her, um, uh, in 2015, when the Lord said, seven years, this is finished. This is finished. She will come out and not go back into the house. So she's been out for two years now. Um, you know, living in a care home, but she can talk and keep, you know, so she's doing really good. Praise God, yeah? <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for yes. this time. Show your heart. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Anyone else? Okay, it's 9.15. We need to close then. Um, why don't we um, do a closing prayer and a cleansing prayer? Um, who wants to do our closing and cleansing prayer? Renee, would you? Why don't we all stand up? Thank you. Heavenly Father, just thank you tonight for... Um, for all these hearts, these open hearts, Lord, that they, they have so much faith in you that they would just come to you with anything that they have and that you take it, that you change them, that they receive, that they would receive everything that you need to give them, Lord. And I, I just thank you for allowing me to see that. That's my blessing that I get to witness all of this going on, Lord. I, I thank you right now for that. I thank you um, for, for the YPI team, Lord. So on fire, so happy, Lord, because I've been praying for the youth in this church to just take a step and just take it, Lord, and I get to see that in this lifetime, Lord, and I'm blessed for that. Thank you, Lord. Um, also, um, asking right now for uh, mighty prayers over whatever was um, ailing everyone tonight, Lord, as we prayed over them, Lord. May we be um, released from all of that as well, that um, you take that from us and um, refresh us, fill us again to overfilling with your mighty fire again, Lord, that we can touch others again um, as we pray over and do your mighty will, Lord, because we all know here, right, that we have the authority to do your mighty will because that's what we, we, we are here for in this lifetime that you've given us. I thank you, Lord. I thank you again for your son, Jesus, and I see all these things in your son, Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Drive carefully and we have two more Thursday nights, and then we'll be done. Thank you, Ken, and um, the YPI team. Thank you. Thank you. Spirit.